The college's Board of Trustees reduces student tuition. What does that mean for your pocketbook? October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Find out how the college supported this important cause. And the Lady Chaparral soccer team is first place in the North Central Community College Conference with a 5-0 record for the season. We catch up with Ashley Falco, our Athlete of the Week. All that and much more on this edition of Courier TV News. Hi, and thanks for joining us. I am Stephanie Cervantes. Tuition costs to be lowered. The 2016 budget approved and the tax levy is reduced by 5%. We get you caught up on what's happening at the Board of Trustees meeting. At Monday's special meeting, trustees approved a proposal to lower tuition to 135 per credit hour for spring 2016. We know that education transforms lives. It touches each one of us and changes what we do and how we look at things. So keeping education affordable is critical for our community. In September 2014, the COD board voted to roll back tuition by $4 per credit hour to $140 per credit hour for the spring 2015 semester. Yes. 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 Trustees also voted this week to approve the fiscal year budget for 2016. This budget is a very important budget. Not, it's not like any other budget that we've seen recently. It represents um, a, a cut in tuition of $5 for our students. It represents a 5% cut in property taxes. And it also represents a new methodology of approaching the budget itself, casting away the old ways of preparing the budget and looking at new benchmarks. So I'm very excited for this college and for our community. Also the agenda at tonight's Board of Trustees meeting. Faculty, staff, and community supporters came out to discuss the possibility of bringing back the Buffalo Theater Ensemble, a professional theater group that was once housed at the College of DuPage. Reporter Carissa Zavaleta has more on the story. The College of DuPage will face a big decision on whether or not the Buffalo Theater Ensemble will be making a return appearance. BTE closed its doors in 2013 due to financial reasons, but recent talk has brought the issue back to center stage. I think it's a great thing for the community as well as the students because I unfortunately got here as soon as they terminated it, but if they brought it back, we'd be able to have so many connections. The theater organization brought the students of the college and the community quality performances for an affordable price. Um, the community, you know, I mean, I feel that they're at a loss by not having a theater group here in Glen Ellen slash DuPage County that they can go to that's cost effective and local, um, you know, and the shows are consistently great. The issue was brought into the spotlight through a Facebook page started by a couple of passionate fans of the theater group who thought the college lost a very important resource for the students and the community. They decided something needed to be done. And it just started off as a little small Facebook group with us uh, uh, theater students. And it snowballed into a Facebook page, then a YouTube channel, then to merchandise. We got buttons and t-shirts. And then next thing you know, it, we have a started a petition and over the course of the two years that we've been active, we've cultivated over a thousand signatures. The group started a petition that has received over 1,000 signatures and keeps gaining momentum. Since the Buffalo Theater Ensemble had its final curtain call in 2013, faculty, students, and the COD community must decide if the company should head back into the spotlight for an encore. For all the latest college news and events, log on to Courier Newspaper at codcourier.org. Skinny jeans, fashion jeans, comfy jeans. COD faculty and staff wore it all in support of Breast Cancer Awareness Month today. Team COD wore their favorite jeans in plenty of pink to show their support to help end breast cancer on National Lee Denim Day. The event also marks Team COD's efforts to raise financial support to end breast cancer. To donate to Team COD, visit DenimDay.com and enter 133738 under Donate to Team and select Team COD. October is Hispanic Heritage Month and the college will be hosting events in honor of the celebration. Student Life, in partnership with the Latino Outreach Center and the Center for Student Diversity and Inclusion, are hosting special programming as part of Hispanic Heritage Month. Poet, 
MC, actor, playwright, artist, and community organizer Michael Reyes will perform from 11 a.m. to noon on Monday, October 5th in the Student Services Center Atrium. Reyes is a leading voice in progressive and radical music, combining cultural stories of resistance and raw hip-hop and inspiring poems. His work challenges and confronts the many social ills faced by communities of color. And on Thursday, October 8th, a panel discussion on immigration reform will take place from 1 to 2.30 in the Student Services Center, room 3245. The panel will discuss the current immigration crisis and debate reform measures, delving into why immigration has divided America. All events are free and open to the public. For more information, please call the Office of Student Life at 630-942-2243. The College of DuPage hosted its fifth annual Last Wood Chaps 5K Sunset Run this past weekend. Proceeds from the event help benefit the College's Students' Emergency Fund. Reporter Doug Huff has more on this event. Excitement and school spirit filled the air last Saturday as students, faculty, friends, and community members converged on the COD campus to support the annual 5K Laps with the Chaps Run. This is a fundraiser for the Student Emergency Fund, and that fund actually is for students who are at risk of dropping out because of unanticipated financial strain. Runners and participants fueled up on cuisine from local vendors with a portion of the proceeds benefiting the Student Emergency Funds. To raise awareness and raise money for leukemia research, and 10% of the proceeds today are going towards the Student Emergency Fund. <laughs> While parents were in the race, the kids kept busy at the kids' club, shooting bozo buckets, enjoying the bounce house, face painting, and much more. 700 runners gathered on the turf to kickstart the race at 4.30 p.m. The countdown began, and we were on the front lines to watch it unfold. Jake Waterman was the first male to cross the finish line at just 15 minutes and 42 seconds. I mean, I think it's great. It's great getting everybody out here and everybody's having a good time and it's for a good cause, so yeah. The first female was Jessica Rangel at 19 minutes and 4 seconds. There you are. There you go. Both Jake and Jessica left with a 200 Visa gift card, but we believe everyone left as winners. On Friday, there will be an open house for the new Homeland Security Training Center from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. The new security center expands first responder instruction with advanced firearms training, interactive shoot-don't-shoot -shoot simulations, and weapons cleaning and repairing. Included in this building is a 50-foot, 24-position indoor firing range that provides first responders a unique facility for training purposes. This event is free and open to the public to attend. Conception 2015 Gaming Convention is this weekend at the Student Resource Center here at COD. The convention will be held from October 2nd to the 4th, and tickets are $5 per day with a student ID. The convention will feature top-of-the-line games from large-spanning role-playing games to small-scale tabletop adventures. This convention has everything any gamer of any level would appreciate and not want to miss. For more information, visit the Sci-Fi Fantasy Gaming Club website at www.codscificlub.wordpress.com. For some, soccer is just another sport, but for Ashley Falco, soccer is what inspires her. CNTV sports reporter Rob Nardini talks to Ashley about what drives her on and off the soccer field. Women's soccer team is already kicking into action this season, and part of any of their success will depend on sophomore Ashley Falco and her dedication to the sport she has loved to play since she was a child. When I was four years old, me and my little sister, we started playing soccer, and my dad promised us that as soon as we got old enough to play, that he would coach us. As a midfielder, Ashley helps to hold her team's offense and defense together to help them reach their goal. Well, this season, I mean, we have the same goal in mind as last season, and that's to eventually make it to nationals by the end. And I think we have a pretty good shot of doing that this year. Being exceptional athletes isn't enough for a team to succeed without team chemistry. When a team works well with each other, they can inspire each other to accomplish anything. And Ashley's been able to uh, explain to the freshmen, you know, what's expected of them and, and kind of shown that on the field. Who inspires Ashley to be the soccer player she is? 
Well, the number one person that I would say inspired me to even get into soccer to begin with was my dad. Um, he actually resigned coaching as a high school coach for 16 years to coach me and my sister as four-year-olds playing BBA soccer. Ashley has a lot of ground to cover, but her future is a wide open field. For Courier TV News, I'm Rob Nardini. Thanks for joining us for this week's Courier TV News. We leave you now with the time-lapse video of the supermoon lunar eclipse from this past Sunday. The time-lapse was captured by CNTV cameraman Cam Rogasevsky.